Workers abandon woke labour. Let's have a look. Good evening, everyone. Florian Heiser here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee, because I thought we'd have a look at this article discussing, well, workers are apparently abandoning labour because of its woke ideals and policies. Now, I can't say I'm surprised in the slightest. There's some policies that Labour has and some things that they believe, which is completely untrue and fantasy. And I'll bring up the most common one here. That, that alone is enough for me to not even consider casting a vote for them, because what they're believing and what they're advocating for, the interventions they would push forward, would cause more damage than any of the benefits of the good suggestions they have. You want the two big parties to come together and put things on the table and work together, get a consensus, so we've got good policies ahead. But it doesn't feel like we have that now, does it? And the biggest one I have the issue with Labour is the wage gap fantasy, everyone. They're advocating for this. This is part of their policy platform. It's just going to create more pain, more work, more bureaucracy, and it's just rubbish to win votes. There's no such thing as a gender pay gap. If there is, you're breaking the law. If you're purposely paying someone less based on their gender, with all other things being equal, and that's the only thing, you're discriminating against them because of that, you're breaking the law here in Australia already. Okay? That's discriminatory. There is a earnings gap that can be detected by looking at the difference in earnings between men and women. That's not a pay gap. That's an earnings gap. I mean, I... I I'm may perhaps I make the mistake in assuming that that is common knowledge. I mean, maybe people don't realize that some people work harder than others and earn more, or maybe some people have different opportunities than other than others. We're not all equal, guys. We've seen it in our own office, and it frustrated Rachel because we, when we had staff, you know, we didn't care what gender they were. We just wanted to make sure they had the right work ethic, and we'd give them opportunities. You know, to bloke. Girls start at the same time. And we'd say, okay, we've got this project. We want someone to, to take the lead on it, to be the, the head assistant on it. And who would always put their hand up? You know, the young bloke. Oh, we need some help to do some overtime, guys. We need to get this out tonight. Who'd stay back with me to get it done? Who'd put their hand up? The young bloke. Who would be the one that left at 5 p.m. on the dot every time? This wasn't just one people. We saw the pattern again and again and again. Maybe it's just at that age... You know, I, I suspect it has something to do with, well, I'd say the differences in, in sexual market value between the genders. How, well, for men, you really need to prove your worth in many ways. And that's through the acquisition of material, material goods and to show that you can be a provider. But that's such an old-fashioned idea. I don't think some people even click onto that anymore. But I mean, this is, this is one of Labour's policies. This is the one that it's just ludicrous. The Albanese Labour government will lead a national push to close the gender pay gap. There isn't any. They're talking about research from the Workplace Gender Equality Agency. Just think about that. That is an entire government department of tax dollars that are being pissed away. Just a complete waste. You know? So women earn an average of 25000 less than men every year and face a 20% gap in total wages. Yes, it's because... I mean, uh, uh, t honestly, guys, tell me. Viewers, please tell me. I know we're about 87% male watching the channel. But do people fall for this stuff? I mean, honestly, I was talking to a friend's wife. She was in HR. She believed it. She thought there was a legitimate gap. And when you explain to her, no, it's an earnings gap. Unbelievable. Her husband has seen it. He's worked in IT. He knew the difference. Is it just the people that don't work hard that don't get it? Or the people who haven't actually ran a biz run a business? So, I mean, this is ludicrous. The fact that they're calling for this. They want to legislate companies with more than 250 employees. More red tape. More legislation. More rubbish. This is what Labor's proposing. All of this, all of this is a complete waste of money. A complete waste of resources. And you know what it'll do? It'll probably be cheaper to fire one person so you get under 250 and then you don't need to worry about all this garbage, all this reporting stuff. So this alone, and there's many other policies 
that I'm not a fan of. But this alone would be enough for me to not even consider labor. They're, they're becoming more and more woke here in Australia. They're losing their working class roots. They're abandoning the people that voted for them. I mean, just look at what's happening in the Hunter now. Everyone's pretending that they're fans for coal. And Stewart is causing an uproar, having left one nation and now I think he's running for himself. So, yeah, I mean, it's a joke for anyone to think, to even say that Labour represents the working class anymore. Guys, don't kid yourself. They don't give a crap. You know, rubbish like this just shows you. So let's look at this article. Abandoning woke Labour. We'll have a look here. So, if you will vote Pauline Hanson. Workers desert the Labour Party over the party's obsession with woke ideals. Working class Aussies are abandoning the ALP in droves over the party's obsession with woke issues like gender, race, and climate change. <laughs> yeah. See, th these are things... What people want, what the average Australian wants, I'm going to take a guess here, is to be able to afford a house, to be have, have a decent quality of life, to not get ripped off and have to spend a fortune every time they go to the shops... And, you know, to have a peaceful, niceful existence. You know, maybe you'll be able to go on a holiday every now and then. Maybe not have to work yourself to death just to get a home for your family. We're not, not one of Maybe a holiday. You know, maybe not having to work 200 hours. <laughs> maybe not houses that cost a fortune. And not policies about climate change or race garbage that the average person doesn't care about. Here's the thing, you've got, you know, got this whole argument, all these, these racists going, you know, oh, um, you know, racism is a big problem here in Australia, or, and you've got identitarians of all different races, you know, wanting to have their own unique groups cordoning off. I mean, if you think about it, you know, you look at some of the, these, these um, white, you know, Aussies, inner city Melbourneian, soy lipping, green voting, latte voters. Do you think I'd have more in common with them? Because, you know, I've got the same skin, skin color. Or my Chinese neighbor that owns a business. Who do you think I'd have more in common with? Just, just, just think about that. Race is a really old-fashioned way of grouping together with regards to ideology. <laughs> you know, maybe back in the days when you're different tribes and separated, it'd make a little bit more evolutionary sense. But nowadays, it's a bit of a joke, guys. That's where I'm hoping, I'm hoping... Labour won't lose its way obsessing about this stuff because you, you know you've got you've got governments at a state and council level implementing policies that discriminate against people on race. They they call it affirmative action or positive discrimination, but that's essentially what it is. Do we want that in Australia, guys? Do you want a society where your skin colour determines your your ability to get a job? Weren't we meant to go, move away from that? It's just. Now they want to codify it in law. Oh boy, you know. So working class Australians, the very foundation of the Labour Party, are abandoning the ALP in droves because they think the party has been overrun by woke ideals and white collared university educated yuppies. Well, you can see some of the people that, I mean, you know, you look at these unionists. Some of them, they went to uni and then they went straight in the union. That was their whole career. What exposure do they have to the real world? How have they ever, they've got no idea, have they ever run a business? Have they ever worked in the industries they're representing? Private research commissioned by the New South Wales Electrical Trades Union, which was itself just taken over by the left this week, has found a quarter of union members surveyed no longer vote Labour and a further 35% reported decreasing support for the party. Incredibly, one in five said the Labour Party better represented... Oh, sorry, sorry, wait, wait, what? One in five said the Liberal Party better represented working people. Or maybe the Labour Party wants to, wants to really attract the vote for the, uh, the uh, what is it, unemployed union, unemployed workers union. The document exclusively obtained by news.com.au confirms what many in the party have been quietly warning about for years that among blue-collar voters, Labour is perceived as elitist and out of touch, pandering to inner-city interests that drive their traditional base away. 
What do you reckon, guys? I, I, I honestly. The research was commissioned by the New South Wales ETU before its left-wing takeover and conducted by a firm called Redbridge that is run by former Victorian Assistant ALP Secretary Kos Samaras. It found an astonishing number of blue-collar workers, proud union members, no less, are abandoning the party because of its perceived preoccupation with fringe issues that have no relevance to them. Oh, I mean... <laughs> that sounds... That sounds like a lot of politics, doesn't it? It really does, you know? The mainstream disconnect is exactly what key Labour figures such as former right faction leader and Hunter MP Joel Fitzgibbon... WA Premier Mark McGowan, a New South Wales leadership contender Chris Minns, and Bankstown MP Tanya Miluku have warned about. But there's a little hard data until now. It also has grave implications for the Upper Hunter by election in New South Wales, which is a litmus test for the state Labour leader Jody McKay. It will also determine if the coalition is plunged into minority government. The survey of almost 1,500 ETU members, plus four in-depth focus groups in Western New South Wales, the Hunter region, the Sydney metro region, and Wollongong, found the perception of the la of Labour as captive to inner city to trendy inner city issues is killing the party. I mean, is that what you think about when you think about working class Australians? To that image there, everyone. I, I don't know. You know. I mean, there you go. I'm I'm a, a inner city university educated, uh, uh, I don't know, well, father of five nutcase, but still, uh, this this type of nuts idiots don't appeal to me. You know, you don't. <laughs> Could you talk to them at a barbie? Support for the Labour Party among ETU New South Wales members has markedly declined in recent years. Around 60% of survey respondents reported a decrease in their support, with 25% indicating they would no longer vote Labour, the report said. Nearly a fifth of respondents now see the Liberal Party as the major party that best represents working people like them. The staggering results are driven by a sense that Labour is no longer focused on the bread and butter issues of jobs and wages, and instead preoccupied by issues such as gender, climate change and identity politics. The party is seen to have drifted away from issues most important to participants, job security, wages and rights at work, in favour of woke ideals, i.e. the issues in a city marg of marginal seat voters at their expense. Labour has lost its purpose. The survey found 42% of union members saw gender issues as the biggest distraction to what government should really be focusing on, followed by climate change at 34%. Bloody hell. Yeah, I agree 100%. 100%. Complete waste of energy, time, resources. They're much more important things facing the average Aussie than some woke rubbish. When asked what issues they see the Labour of today focusing upon, participants consistently spoke about marriage equality, gender rights, identity politics, and most commonly carbon emissions and climate change. Critically, the research found the respondents did not think these issues were unimportant, merely that they were given too much focus at the expense of more important issues. They talk about the interests and values of greenies and inner city people dominating. Woke culture seems to have supplanted working culture in Australia. Well, yeah, working, the idea, you know, actually working in Australia seems to have been supplanted by woke culture. Why work when you can make money being a protester and grift things? Do you want to join the Buy Larger Mansions organization, guys? That's, that's, that's what we're doing wrong. you got to just do that. Then get call for donations. There is a consciousness that blue-collar workers like them are seen as backward knuckle-draggers by those who flick a switch... And expect the power to come on with no interest in what, go what goes on to make that happen. The workers wanted Labour to fight harder for their workplace rights. Better wages, job security, quality control and the right to strike. But even more so, to fight for their jobs instead of arguing about climate change and other ideological preoccupations. One participant said, 
I feel betrayed or cheated by the Labour Party. They've made a big push for carbon neutrality, catering to leftists in inner city Melbourne or Sydney. FU will vote Pauline Hanson or Clive Palmer. <laughs> there you go. Good old Palmer. I mean, good old Hanson. I mean, she's still around. And you may not like her. You know, you may, may have fallen for all the rubbish they're talking about, one nation in the media, because they're not a bunch of racists. And they're not right wing by any measure. You know, if anything, I'd say they're pretty center left in some of their policies. They're pretty interventionalist. But she is representing uh, some of the needs of the constituents quite clearly. And I can see how people feel frustrated, at least the big two. Another said they felt Labour is going to F you out of your job. And yet another said the Liberals might be coming for our rights, but Labour are coming for our jobs. Well, there you go. There's the difference. The Liberals are coming for your rights, which is probably fair, but Labour are coming for your jobs. The research found Labour MPs were seen to be a different class of person to the workers interviewed. It's like talking to aliens, one said. They meet at flash inner city pubs, not in Port uh, Kembla, are not from the shop front, are white collar university educated yuppies, and don't believe in the same stuff I do. They're diamet diametrically opposed. Labour was also seen as being at odds with people of faith. I'm a Christian. I agree with them on the working condition stuff, but disagree with the identity politics stuff, one participant said. Workers also felt it was bad politics for Labour to be dragged into all the culture wars <laughs> crap. Oh, is that a swear word? Well, that's probably a swear word on YouTube. i got to behave. i got to behave. In other words, working class people want Labour to do better and are trying to send a message about the harm they see happening to its supporting their communities or to its support in their communities. People who would typically be, vote, be Labour voters feel quite alienated by the marginal policies and not hearing anything that sounds like it'll help them, the report said. And if they're not hearing anything from Labour, maybe it's time Labour finally heard them. So there we have it, everyone. It's frustrated working class Australians turning their back on Labour for some reason. For some reason. I wonder why. Well, guys... What do you think the solution is to this? Well, it's very simple. Don't vote for Labour. If you're frustrated at the policies they're putting forward, don't vote for them. But don't waste your vote either. Don't do a donkey vote. Don't go, oh, I'll never vote for Liberal. Don't. Vote for a minor. Don't waste your vote. Even if you think, you've got to learn how to use your preferences, guys. Even if you think it's a waste. If that minor party can get enough to get above the 3%, of votes they can get funding they need that money more than one of the big two okay labor liberal even the greens they don't need the money labor and liberal they get money from our taxes for their policy development it's just it's just a complete rort it's the minor ones that need it particularly if you want to send a message to the big two that's what i'd encourage people to do to learn the power of their preferences to don't feel disenfranchised this is just a phase that labor's going through okay they need to get slapped around a bit, I think, so they wake up and realize that they need to focus on issues that actually matter to Australians. Because, to be honest, all this stuff, I think, can cause more damage. Here's the question. Here's the question. Do you want all this um, social justice, all this woke rubbish coming in to here in Australia? What's going to cause more damage, that or some of the liberal policies? So, use your preferences to send a message, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support the channel. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links on Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says. Use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us using PayPal. You can also see our pocket squares, handmade, right here in our very own sweatshop in Queensland, <laughs> this house. Take care, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.